Tornadoes, or twisters as they are sometimes called, are not an uncommon sight in the USA, occurring primarily in the region known as the American Midwest. Indeed, in 1992 there were an incredible 1,293 recorded tornadoes in the United States. So common that you might be forgiven that thinking that people have just learned to live with them, that they don't really pose much of a threat. And yet, every year people are killed by tornadoes. Unpredictable and highly destructive, they are the forces of nature that are difficult to predict and almost impossible to fully prepare for. However, there is one single tornado that appears to dwarf all of the tornadoes as far back as records go. This is the record breaker on every single tornado statistic that we have. The biggest on record, the fastest moving, the longest duration, the single most destructive, the biggest death toll. It was one freak tornado that we have never seen the likes of since. It was the Tri-State Tornado of 1925. On March the 18th, 1925, the people of Southeast Missouri, South Illinois, and Southwest Indiana were to bear witness to the single most destructive tornado of all time. For three and a half hours, it cut a swathe of devastation across 13 counties. By the time it was over, whole towns and villages had been destroyed, more than 2,000 people were wounded, and 695 people had been killed. The disaster began just outside Ellington, Missouri, in a region on the edge of the Ozark Mountains. The day had started out as an oppressive grey day with low cloud, but warm winds blowing in during the morning had brought unseasonably warm, sunny and humid conditions. At about one in the afternoon, large thunderheads began to rise, and the first rumblings of thunder were heard. Black, ragged clouds tugged down from the cloud base, swirling above the forests on the edge of Ellington. A funnel cloud formed and touched down. Local farmer Sam Flowers was caught out in the open beneath the storm. The horse he was riding survived, returning later to the farm, but he was found crushed beneath a tree. He's believed to be the first victim of the tornado, but he would not be the last. Much, much worse was to come. After Ellington, the next settlement in the path of the tornado was the mining village of Annapolis. Eyewitnesses described seeing what they thought at first was some kind of black fog coming down from the hilltops, before realising too late what was actually upon them. Although the tornado had yet to reach its full intensity, it wrecked the mine workings and destroyed 90% of the buildings in Annapolis. Four people were killed. The tornado moved on relentlessly, ripping up topsoil from fields, flinging animals and farm machinery miles into the sky, smashing buildings like matchwood before it. As it passed the small settlement of Ridge, it tore the small Ridge parochial school from its foundations and flung the whole building half a mile away into the nearby hillside. There were many serious injuries, but amazingly, no one was killed. Moving at an estimated speed of 60 to 70 miles an hour, which is about 95 to 110 kilometers an hour, the tornado ploughed its way across Perry County, destroying the brick-built mansion house of the district judge, killing his wife and house guest. Keeping to a steady heading of east-northeast, the tornado crossed the Mississippi River into Illinois. In its wake, it left a trail of devastation about 100 miles long, 160 kilometers, with 13 fatalities. What followed next was quite possibly the most destructive 45 minutes ever seen in terms of tornado damage, as Illinois was to bear the brunt of the destruction wrought by this terrible, unstoppable force of nature. First hit was Gorham, a small town centred on an important railway junction. The tornado slammed into the town travelling at an estimated 65 miles an hour, 100 kilometres an hour. Residents, unaware of the approach of the tornado, were caught completely unprepared. One survivor wrote afterwards, Suddenly the air was filled with 10,000 things. Boards, poles, cans, garments, stoves, whole sides of the little frame houses. In some cases the houses themselves that were picked up and smashed to the earth. Living beings too. A baby was blown from its mother's arms. A cow, picked up by the wind, was hurled into the village restaurant. 
Eyewitnesses reported seeing people cut in two by flying debris. Railway cars were thrown around like toys. Trees were ripped out by the roots. People and livestock were picked up and sucked into the vortex, the bodies and carcasses later being found over 20 miles away. The wind was so powerful that planks of wood were found driven right through the trunks of trees. Within just a couple of minutes the thriving town had been reduced to rubble. Gorham suffered almost total destruction. Every building was destroyed or severely damaged. 37 people were killed. And yet, on roared the tornado, growing in intensity. Next was Murfreesboro, a picturesque town of 15,000 inhabitants. Just eight minutes after flattening Gorham, the tornado barreled into Murfreesboro. Again, nothing was spared if it was in the path of the twister. A school, a church hosting a funeral service, residential houses, high street shops, they were all destroyed. 234 people were killed and over 600 injured. And yet, on roared the tornado across South Illinois, levelling everything in its path. DeSoto, 69 killed. West Frankfort, 148 killed. Parrish, 46 killed. And then into Indiana. Griffin, completely destroyed. Princeton, 45, killed. Finally, at around 4.30 in the afternoon, the tornado began to weaken and destabilize, finally breaking up 10 miles northeast of Princeton, Indiana. The tornado left behind a trail of destruction some 220 miles, 350 kilometers long, and over a mile wide in many places. At least 695 people were killed, there were over 2,000 injured and over 15,000 people left homeless. It was by far and away the most destructive single tornado the modern world has ever seen. To give an idea just how outside the norm this monster was, here are a few statistics regarding the Tri-State Tornado. It remained grounded for three and a half hours. Most tornadoes only stay grounded for around 15 minutes. Between Gorham and Murfreesboro, it averaged a forward speed of 73 miles per hour, which is still an unbroken record. Atmospheric pressure readings along the track of the tornado hold the record for the lowest ever recorded in the area. It killed more people than any other single tornado. It's ranked F5 on the Fujita scale, the highest rank for intensity a tornado can achieve with wind speeds inside the vortex estimated to have been well over 300 miles an hour. There are many individual tales of tragedy to come from this event. The 33 children killed in the small school in DeSoto. The West Frankfort miners who were trapped underground, escaping the mine hours later only to find that their families were missing or killed. There were the terrible fires which burned through the wreckage of Murfreesboro, killing men, women and children who survived the tornado, but were trapped in the remains of the broken wooden houses. One irony of the Tri-State Tornado was that its size in fact helped to disguise what it actually was. Eyewitnesses would describe a kind of black fog or cloud when first seeing the approaching storm. It's likely that the immense debris cloud swirling around the tornado kept it hidden from view. The first time that people realised that they were in fact in the path of a tornado was when it was right on top of them. I can't even begin to imagine what this must have been like to have lived through this. Looking at the photographs of the aftermath, you think that you're looking at pictures of Hiroshima after the nuclear blast. How do you comprehend a force that can pick up an iron steam train off the railroad track, cause buildings to literally explode, and has the force to throw a horse and buggy 20 miles through the air? How do you carry on when your house is gone, and your spouse and all your children have been killed? and yet the people here rebuilt their lives, and they did carry on. One story I read was how just two days later, the Indiana State High School Boys Basketball Championship was held, and 15,000 people attended to cheer on the competing teams. 
One thing with a tragedy like this is that there is no lesson to be learned, no overlooked fact that could have just prevented it. We just have to prepare as best we can and get on with living our lives. Because for all we know, this could happen again tomorrow. <laughs>